knapsack would be crammed full with everything one could imagine. Because he was leaving home, he wanted to take everything he could to remember mom and dad and the buttermilk biscuits that were back at home. And uh, it was an incredible chore for the soldier to be marched with enormous load simply because at the end of the first day of march, every, seemed, every pound seemed like a weight of 100. Let me interject here to say that as we come to Christ, we have to shut off the old man and put on the new man. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, I pay attention to, all things are become new. I'm not who I used to be. Praise God, praise God. I love this country. Uh, we've been living uh, 240 years, I think it was, uh, free, uh, 4th of July. Me, I just passed almost 13 years. June 28th, uh, I got baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of my sins, and I've been living a free creature. How many's been baptized in Jesus' name? You're free. How many wants to be baptized in Jesus' name? Come on, get a hunger. <laughs> we can do it. All right. Back to the story. With the critical lesson learned, the shrinkage of the knapsack was the beginning of the process that steadily transformed the recruit into the soldier. A greenhorn for the march would always receive taunts and gibes from the seasoned veterans who had graduated. Sorry. Still new to technology here. Who had graduated from the hard knocks of soldiering. These veterans also had... Uh, had also at one time tried to carry the awkward knapsacks jam-packed with the gifts of loved one. The young observing recruit noticed that the veteran knapsacks were shrunken and trim while half of them had nothing at all. With the visual attraction of the veteran's orderly knapsack, the recruit found it to be the highest important to learn how he could get along with and rather be contented. However, the conscript, seemingly ready for action, filled with loyal sentiment, had a lesson to learn. He thought he could measure his powers of stamina and had to find out for himself how incorrect he was. At the sound of the military beats, beats the bugle at the, or the tap of the drum, he contentedly shouldered his immense load of 60 or 70 pounds and plodded bravely off at the command of the march. We've got to have a burden of growth in Christ. We've got to have a burden of growth in Christ because it's going to get heavy sometimes, but we've got to just remember we're going for Calvary. We're going for the cross. We've got to keep our eyes set ahead. Amen. I'm going to skip ahead here. It was just a horrible battle. A lot of these, uh, I have statistics here. Um, there was, you know, one family, they had 18 kids. They had a lot of kids. I don't know how many they had. It just says 18 of their kids died in the war. Uh, another uh, battalion only had nine men left at the end of 635 guys. They actually lost them in seven minutes. It was just a, uh, it's a brutal, brutal war that took place. It even says the, the Native Americans had about 3,500 uh, 3, 3, fighting for the Union. A little over 1,000 were killed. That's one in three. It's just a high death rate. But you know what? The violent took it by force. The violent over one. The, the Union won because they, they had what it took to, get, uh, to make it to the end. Uh, I was, a few minutes here, just uh, three key points. Uh, patience, knowledge, and to weaponize our faith. That's how we can uh, win this battle. Patience, to make up your mind and then pursue. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, they're watching us up from heaven. Can you see it? They're encouraging us. Come on, Sister White. Come on, Brother Bobby. Come on, Sister Valia. Come on, Brother Alvin. They're encouraging us. And they're saying, and, and the Bible also says, Let us lay aside every weight, which is every burden or hindrance. And I know we all got some. Uh, all along the way we get some. We got to let it go. Give it to God. And the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. One of my favorite verses, Luke 21, 19, in your patience possess ye your souls. God says in your patience possess ye your souls. I can't hold your patience. He can't hold your patience, but you can hold your own patience. Patience is at first a result of listening and responding to the word of God. Luke, in the, uh, the story of Luke 8.15, the story of the sower. The sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed seed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered the way because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang, sprang up and choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare forth fruit an hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath the ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples said unto him, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, 
but to others parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then come with the devil, and take away the word out of their hearts. You gotta fight tooth and nail for the word. When it comes forth, you gotta fight tooth and nail for it, lest it, they should believe and be saved, as the word says. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy and have no root, which for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away. Your time of temptation is coming. It's not if it's coming, it's, it's when it comes. You got to be ready for the fire, as Pastor was talking about. Got to be ready to withstand that temptation and, and, and say, what can I learn from this as he preached last week? And the word says, and, those, and that which fell among the thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and pleasures of this life and bring forth no, and bring forth no fruit to perfection. They had fruit, but they didn't make it all the way. The Bible says they had fruit, but they just didn't make it. But that on good ground, repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, infilling the Holy Ghost and full of faith, that's good ground, are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it. They it means they fought and won and bring forth fruit with patience. What kind of ground am I giving God? Am I really opening myself up to him or I only letting him work on a problem? And that's it. The word needs to be alive in me, not in my problems. Because my problems got enough problems of their own. I don't need to keep them. Jesus warns us to watch out for uh, they lost the fight when the devil came in uh, verse 12. When they were by the wayside and the devil came to say, hey, I can't do it good. I was trying to do that knock. Top. Hey, Tiffany. Top. Top one. Okay. Hey, Tiffany, why don't you give in to that temptation of hot fries, hot geo fries. <laughs> devil come and get you, but you got to be ready to stand up and fight. Uh, the second one, patience, after patience comes knowledge. The old adage I heard when I was a kid, always knowledge is half the battle. If we know who we're fighting, we're going to know how to fight. Proverbs 11 says, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Right. In other words, get advice. If we got a pastor here who loves us, I'm here to help. Brothers and sisters who help, get advice from somebody. You're not the only one going through things. Whatever you're going through, you're not the only one going through it. Also in Proverbs 15 it says, Without counsel, the purpose is disappointed, but in a multitude of counselors, they are established. Knowledge is half the battle. There is wisdom and knowledge. There is wisdom and counsel. Going through something, get advice. It really helps. You won't be disappointed. That's what we're here for. We want you to make it all together. I still get advice. I'm not too old to get any help. I'm not giving up. I'm going to fight. Then after patience and knowledge, we are to weaponize our faith. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 says, For though we walk in flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not guns. They're not missiles. They're not knives. But mighty through God. How? The prayer and the praise and the giving of our testimony. The Bible reading. The going to church. The building up of faith. That's, that's our weapons. Great. To the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations. You know those thoughts coming in your head? No, we've got to cast those down. That's not real. God does give it a spirit of fear. He gives it a spirit of faith. Uh, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself. Now it's talking about spiritual warfare. Every high thing that acknowledges itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. When I got saved, I was glad to give up drugs and smoking. But I had a really hard time trying to get the music I had indulged in over all those years out of my head. They would just constantly play. I had to keep praying and seeking God and the Lord and fighting. And finally God erased it. It's quiet up here now. You know, you know the devil? Who knows his name? Lucifer. He was the choir director in heaven. He, gave, he, he was the one who was responsible for getting the praise going and they gave it to God. He got, he got puffed up. It says... Music was created to worship God. If I'm the music, if the music I am listening to is not drawing me closer to God, then I should reconsider if I ought to be listening to that song or group. Let me, let me say that again. Music was created to worship our God. If the music I listen to doesn't draw me close to God, then maybe I ought to reconsider what I'm listening to. Come on, come on. Hell is on a building project. Isaiah 5, 13 and 14 says, Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. There's no measure how big hell is. You can't, you can't measure it. You cannot measure it. 
and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. Hell wasn't designed for you. Look at your neighbor and say, hell wasn't designed for you. Hell wasn't designed for you. Thank you Lord. Amen. Wasn't for you. The gates, you know, I got good news though. Matthew 16, 18. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. No matter how many times you're attacked, the gates of hell shall prevail. We're going to make it. We've got to stay in the church. Can we stand and uh, look at someone and say, we're going to make it? We're going to make it. There's this old song. I love this song. I hadn't heard it in a while. It's really simple. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Got to fight for a church. Brother's singing when he's preaching. All right. <laughs> That takes courage. Please praise the Lord. It takes courage to stand up in front of 70 people and begin to sing a cappella. Praise I thank you, uh, Brother Eric, for sharing that word today. Praise that. If you'd all stand, uh, we're going to go into uh, an extended word. This is not actually extended. It's, uh, Brother Eric is in training. He's in MIT. Anybody know what MIT is? He's a minister in training. Praise the Lord. We got a training center here. Because we're not done when we fill this building. We're not done when we fill this building. We're done. Actually, we're never done until Jesus comes. But we're here to create ministers. Those that can go out and start their own churches. Build their own ministries. Praise God. So, uh, we are in the process of preparing for the coming of God. Does anybody really believe he's coming? Yeah. Well, let me tell you. I'm not trying to be rude. But listen to me close. Your clapping does not determine if you really believe he's coming or not. You're jumping, you're shouting, you're clapping. That does not determine whether you believe it or not. Your actions determine whether you really believe that he's coming or not. How you live your life, how you follow your word, how you pray, how you get involved in your faithfulness in the house of the Lord, your service to the church, those are things that determine whether you really believe that he's coming. Praise God. So I want to encourage you today. We are going to speak about balance. Let me tell you why I'm excited about it. I said all, I said all balance. Because I'm excited about it. Because see, I woke up yesterday. I had another sermon I was preparing called uh, Marriage. And I'm going to let you stand for another moment. Just please bear with me. Called Marriage or, what's the other one? Mistress. And I, I can't preach it yet because the Lord told me i got to preach this today. Um, and he told me exactly what he wanted me to guide the church into. Uh, balance, we're going to start with uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. I'm going to read it. It's going to be up here on the board. I'm going to turn this off because I don't need to. I'd like for you to be able to see up there. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. It says to everything there is a season. Someone say season. And a time to every purpose under the heavens. I can stop right now. But we're not. I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit more detail. But that is the that is the text that we're going to read from. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Uh, before I go on, I want you to know there's not going to be a Sunday school today. So children, please be patient. I'm, I'm going to say it slowly and hope I can convince you. I'm not going to preach long today. Oh, they bought it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I, I've been pretty good at saying that and keeping it. Uh, but if the Holy Ghost grabs a hold, I don't know. I'm going to look at the time. It is now 3.35. Is it 3.35 or 4.35? Wow, time flies. Time flies when you're having fun, huh? Praise the Lord. It says, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. Verse 4, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. See, people don't understand that part. They think you always got to embrace. There are times when you got to put some things at arm's length. Can I get amen? amen? Verse 6 says a time to get and a time to lose. Oh, we really don't like that one. We like the time to get part. But when it's time to lose, we start to get frustrated. 
Uh, it says, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. Oh, we don't like the silence part. We always want to, see, remember, we don't have freedom of speech when we come to God. It says there is a time that we have to be silent. It says a time to love and a time to hate. Oh, Lord. People really don't like that one because, see, they, oh, you're not supposed to hate. The Bible says there's a time to love and a time to hate. What did God say? He hated who? Well, I had one person argue with me. Oh, God did loved everybody. No, he didn't. Who did he hate? Esau have I hated. Understand, I'm not, there, there's a time to love and a time to hate. But what was Esau's problem? Sin. We need to hate sin, church. That's a problem in today's society. They don't hate it enough. You know why? Because we people embrace it every day. We need to hate sin. I'm going to tell you this right now. That's the time to hate. Hate the sin, but love the sinner. We need balance in our lives. We need to hate the sin, but love the sinner. This is a time of war and a time of peace. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you today for the service that we've already encountered. We've already had a wonderful move of your spirit. We have felt your presence. We have celebrated. We have mourned. We have cried. We have laughed. We've rejoiced. And we've wept. Today we're going to talk about that balance. And God, I ask that you would just touch these lips that when I speak, they be in tune with your mind. And let the church receive the words that are coming from the pulpit and from the word of God. And let them embrace those things that they may be transformed to the renewing of their minds. In Jesus' name, and the church said amen. amen. Let's just clap one more time on the God. You can, you can shout, you can clap, you can say hallelujah, you can jump, you can dance. That's all right, I like to dance for God. That's my dance. See, when I was in the world, I didn't dance like that. I danced a little different. I can't do that dance up here. But I can dance for the Lord. See, some of y'all get a little too uptight. Y'all want to, you know, it's, music's going and things are happening. And you just want to be uptight. You didn't loosen up a little bit. When y'all went to the club, you weren't this quiet. You went to the club, you didn't just sit around. But you come to church, you want to get quiet. Praise the Lord. When I was in the club, I was not quiet. I'll be up on one of these things, dancing up in the air, acting all crazy. So I better do at least as much for the Lord. At least as much. Come on, just one more time. Just clap. Clap till your hands are sore. Praise God. You may be seated. We're going to talk about balance today. Uh, when we were talking Wednesday, by the way, I'll be preaching on Wednesdays until further notice. Um, once again, Mark is not here because of his mother. She had a stroke and she fell. So she's gone through uh, some tough times physically. And so we need to keep doing prayer. My mom has, a, has they've concerned about a, a blood clot. It didn't turn out to be one, but they're not letting her travel until... Uh, Monday when she goes back to the doctor. She's actually hanging out with my wife's mom in Maine. And so we're excited about that. Yes. Your mom's also, that's right, your mom is also having trouble. So we're going to just keep all those people in prayer. Please, Sister Charlene's mom, my mom, Brother Mark's mom. But I'm going to be preaching on Wednesdays. So I, I really, you know, I know that there's some people uh, who have, don't know Mark as well. They're, you're not used to Mark. Uh, Mark's been preaching on Wednesdays for about a year, um, and some of you have not come. Uh, well, you don't have that excuse anymore, because I'm preaching on Wednesday. So I expect this. Raise your hand if you're going to be here on Wednesday. Oh, that's just sad. I'm, I'm going to walk up and down this row. You, you guys live somewhere else. I'm going to find out who I got to talk to after church. You got, you're going to drive the bus on Wednesday? We got a new bus driver at New Hope Pentecost. Huh? Over 10 people so far you got for your pickup list? Go ahead. That's my sister right there. I've been waiting for a bus driver for quite some time. Very excited. My wife tried to get me to sell my bus. 
Ain't no way. I was like, no. It's just sitting there. Just wait. God will make it happen. Sometimes we got to be patient on the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We are going to get that together. I'm excited. So, we're in a position now where, you know, Wednesdays shouldn't be an option. That's one of the ways that we're out of balance, and, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. But I want to, let me give you a definition of balance. I got my contacts on, so I got to do this number. I'm showing my age now. Okay. A state of equilibrium. Something used to produce equilibrium. This was one of my favorites. Listen close. This is what balance means. Mental steadiness or emotional stability. Church, we need balance. It says habit of calm behavior. A habit of calm behavior and judgment. And, and I think my, my next favorite is number seven. The power or ability to decide an outcome by throwing one's strength, influence, and support or the like to one side or the other. Some of us need to throw our weight around a little bit more. I need a couple of people. Brother John, Brother Eric, Brother Mondo, Brother Bobby, I need you up here. I need... I need uh, Brother Alvin. Come on, Brother. He said, no, leave me alone, Pastor. Leave me alone. I'm tired. Uh, brother Jerome. I need, no. He's, he's, oh, you gotta, you're working. You've got to watch those guys. Um, okay, I won't be sexist. I need to bring some women to that. Sister uh, Starla. I need you come over here. Sister Amanda. Sister Anna, come on. Okay, now, Sister Starla, I need you on this side. I don't need the rest of you over there. Okay, now I need you to hook up with arms like this. Hook up with my arm. Hook up with my arm. Get over here. Come on. <laughs> you calling me a monkey? He said like monkeys. But it is because we're doing this, right? We got to learn to throw away. Well, we have all of our flesh on this side. We've got uh, John is the club. Eric is the music, Mondo is the drinking, Bobby is the weed, I don't know why I made you weed, because you white, and black folks like the weed, and, but you white, and then you, what do you want to be, you the cocaine, <laughs> you the heron, you know a heron, a heron, that's heroin, okay, and she's the church, she, she's the one, this is the, this is the church, this is the friend that goes, and so, if, if I get pulled, I won't, okay, move on a little bit, because it's going to be, come on, come on, come on. All right, now, be gentle now. I want you to pull, when I say three, I want you to pull that way, okay? When I say three, when I go to one, two, three, not just three, when I say one, I want you guys to pull that way. Now, I do need to preach the rest of this sermon. Okay, ready? When I say one, two, three. You guys are, get back over, you're messing up my example, now get over here. You got big old John over there. We're going to try this again. See, that's why I didn't want you, hook up your arms. Sister started about busting you up, but this is a whole different example. The church is more powerful than all that junk over there. <laughs> Praise God. That's not what I was trying to show, but it did it. Let's try this again. Hook up, come on, dig it. Now, one, two, three. Okay, about time, good Lord. Okay, now, why don't we get the club over here? The club over here. See, when, when we had all that mess going on, see, some of us got a bunch of mess in our lives, and we leave it in there, but we got to start making a balance switch. So we got to start putting some stuff on the God side. So why don't we get Eric over here, get the music. Y'all listen to some crazy stuff. Listen, I'm, listen, drug, sex, and rock and roll. What does that tell you? Listen to some jazz or something. Because you got all this stuff we're putting. Uh, th those that love to listen to rap. I'm not going to rap because I don't know how to do it. I may be black, but I can't. Y'all think all black people can rap. I cannot rap. So, I'm gonna, uh, you know, you, you hear it all, the, all about the weed and the shooting and the slapping and the punching and all. 
all the dirty words, flour and filth, flour and filth, flour and filth. No, we got to switch some side. Go ahead, let's take uh, alcohol. You the alcohol? Ooh, get rid of some alcohol. Now, now there's some confirmation here. This is, the church now is getting stronger. The church is, because you're making some decisions to make some changes. We're putting these things under the blood. Now, go ahead, lock up. Now when I count to three, y'all pull. Don't hurt yourself now. One, two, three, go. Stop, stop. <laughs> Go rip pastor in half. Now stay here, stay here for a minute. Now you notice when it's still, before the balance, the weight was on one side. We threw the weight in our lives with all the junk in our lives. We threw all the weight on one side and we're pulled to that side. What makes you think that you can put all this junk in your lives and not be pulled to that side? But then, this is, this is more like some of you because what happens is, is that we're a young church and you come to this church because you love the music and you love the worship and you love the pastor because he loves you and, 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 and you know, you feel the, the friendliness of the church so you come, but then you start to throw a couple things, but you always keep a couple things on each side. I need one more. Get the one. So you've gotten, you come to church and you start making some changes because you feel, and usually it's the ones you're really okay with getting rid of. The ones that you really don't mind getting rid of too much. And see, people think they're sacrificing, but it's not really a sacrifice because you didn't mind giving it up. It's giving up those things that you want to hold on to. That's when it's a sacrifice. That's when it's submission. It's not submission to do what you want to do. It's submission to do those things that you don't want to do that are going to be better for you. So what happened was, is we've got pulling on both sides, but we've only put some, we've only thrown some of our weight. And now we're stuck in the middle. We can sit here all day, they can pull both sides, and we don't go very far. But the problem is, we still got too much junk, so we can make no progress. We can't grow spiritually, we're stuck in the same spot. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I'm preaching to somebody. Because what happened is, we come to church and we make some changes, but we only threw some of our weight. Before we came to God, we throw all our weight on the sin. We come to church, we throw some of the weight over here. You go on that side. You go on that side. You go on that side. You and me, Bubba. Here we go. You gonna help me out? Now, we're in the church. This is what you call maturity. When you've thrown all your junk aside and turn all those things that were nasty in your life into something good, and now you got all the strength on this side, but you always got a little ring of that, you know, the little thing on your shoulder that says, hey, remember me? Let's hang out. Say it. Remember me? <laughs> Let's hang out. Remember, remember me? Let's hang out. Well, he did a kind of that was good. Let's hang out. That's how the devil is sneaky. Come on, let's do this. So now you've always got this thing here. It's never going to go away until the day we come back. As long as you live in this flesh, you're going to have the one to hang out. Okay? But when you have as much power, when you throw your weight in the right place. See, some of us are throwing our weight in the wrong place. But we throw our weight in the right place. One, two, three, go. <coughs> Somebody clap your hands. Thank you, these guys. Thank you, these guys. Go, 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 go. What we're looking at is a scale. And look at, look at the cross as a scale. And you got one plate on this side with some chains coming down. And you got another plate on this, another chain with another plate on this side. We don't want to be in, in so much balance when it comes to what side we're going to throw our weight. But we have to have balance in our lives. We need to have balance in our lives, and our lives are so far out of balance. And we wonder, uh, I, watched this, um, I watched this example, actually it was, it was also confirmation about this sermon. 
when I was talking about balance. When you watch a child begin to walk, I watched it on Facebook. This guy was preaching. Did you see it? He had a little black boy and as a black preacher, and, and he had his child. He was demonstrating the idea of walking. What, what we talk about walking in the spirit, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Balance is about walking for, for a child who's looking to learn how to walk. They cannot walk until they learn to get their balance. Now, I gave you the throwing away concept because I wanted you to see that we need to, we need to start getting rid of some of the stuff that is pulling us down. But I'm going to give you another illustration that, that wasn't as much an illustration about balance as about where are you going to put your, your power? Where are you going to put your strength and your attention? But now we're going to talk about balance. Because see, we, we talk about, I told you one of my favorite scriptures, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, guess what? We got to learn how to walk. All of you that are in this room when you were a child, you used to crawl, or no, no, excuse me, some of y'all went straight from, from, from just rolling around to walking, and that, that happens sometimes. But every person who has to learn how to walk has to begin to gain their balance. You have to be able to gain balance. I watched my child, and my child, you know, it's so cute too, isn't it? When, when, they, when, they, when they get this, and they, when they're first trying, they're learning how to walk, but they don't have balance. This child, in this video, the guy had his child, I guess, went to grandma, and he walked the child over, and the child fell. And it was funny because everybody began to clap when the child fell. You know, there's two ways of looking at it. We're on the Navajo Nation, so I've got to, to add both. One of them is that, you know, they think it's cute when it's a baby, but when you're 26, it's not cute anymore. When you're 30, and you keep falling, and keep falling, and keep falling. It's not cute anymore. Your, your parents and your family are not laughing about it anymore. We got to stop learning. We got to start learning how to stop falling all the time. We've got to have some, some maturity in our lives in relation to balance. Now the other way to look at it is, you know, there are some people who actually like it when you fail. They're waiting and watching for you to fall. That's all right. Let them do that because if you want to join a church that's going to encourage you, you're in the right place. Because as you walk and as you fall, the Bible says two are better than one. So when you fall, there's going to be somebody in this church to say, come on man, you can make it. Why don't you just stand up? Why don't you try to walk again? I know you keep falling, but I'm going to help you learn how to get your balance.